This morning on This Week, the Pritzker Plan. It's not partisan work. It's not political work. It's just hard work. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker outlines his plan for taxes and spending. Is it real solutions or an election year move? Plus, the Iowa caucus is tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. A caucus is a chance for neighbors to come together. It may not decide presidential nominees, but the party is gathering. What's happening in 2022 and 2024? And oh, my aching back. Unfortunately, it's been misdiagnosed in so many people for so long. A new procedure aimed at taking the pain out of chronic back pain. It's your health this week. WQAD News 8. This is News 8 This Week with Jim Mertens. It's a fiscal plan that's unheard of in Illinois. Governor J.B. Pritzker says the state is able to pay down its bills, resupply its severely underfunded pension program, and invest in education, policing, and other government programs, all while freezing too big taxes and offering property tax relief across the state. Too good to be true, especially in an election year? That's our top story this morning on News 8 This Week. Is it good government or a federal bailout windfall? Now I know that the same tired old characters who are always so desperate to badmouth Illinois will falsely attribute our fiscal success to the Federal American Rescue Plan Act. As usual, they're wrong. Governor J.B. Pritzker is touting his plan to freeze taxes on gas and groceries and an immediate property tax relief. Plus, putting millions into the underfunded pension program and stashing money away in the so-called rainy day fund. Right now, the average state can run for 29 days on its rainy day fund. In Illinois, we can run for 15 minutes. But critics say it's a one-year only solution proposed during an election year. One of the things I have real concern about is the fact that uh, the governor is proposing what appears to be about $2.5 billion in permanent uh, government expansion while only providing $1 billion of tax relief and only on a short-term basis. Democrats control the House and the Senate in Springfield, so the Pritzker plan has a good chance at passage without Republican support. Even so, the governor used sharp elbows toward his critics even before they responded to his plan. During this budget cycle especially, seats at the grown-up table will be off limits to those who aren't working in the public's best interests. Illinois Democrats have a firm grip on legislative power being the majority in the state Senate and state house. So what can Republicans do to reshape some of that legislation? And joining us is Republican Noreen Hammond of Macomb. Thank you so much for joining us. What was on first blush your opinion of the governor's address? Um, actually, Jim, at first blush, uh, I was encouraged to see that um, a lot of the focus of the budget um, was in the area of education. Um, the K through 12 education um, has some significant increases as does higher education. And um, unfortunately, for many, many years, uh, that's not been an area of, of focus for um, this administration and previous administration. The other big headline, of course, were the uh, tax changes, the uh, freeze on the gas tax and grocery tax and, and changes for property tax where you, uh, taxpayers would get some money back. Republicans have welcomed that, but are, I've heard two different things. First off, they say it's short term because it's one year only. And the other is that it's an election year gimmick. Well, um, you know, I never refer to a, a property tax um, freeze or a property tax uh, break as, as a gimmick. Uh, the, the devil is always in the details for these things, certainly. And, um, you know, as far as the gas tax and, and freezing that, uh, how does that affect our um, road fund and the projects that are already in the pipeline? And um, is there going to be enough money in that fund uh, to complete those projects. So those are all questions that we have to ask. We can't just take everything at uh, face value, certainly. Um, but I would also say that uh, this is the governor's uh, plan. This is his outline and um, how he would uh, prefer to see dollars spent. Uh, but the reality is that it is the, uh, the General Assembly 
uh, that does those appropriations. One of the things Governor uh, Pritzker was touting is he said Illinois will end this fiscal year with a $1.7 billion surplus, the first of its kind in more than 25 years. Let's be honest, that's unheard of in Illinois history, it seems, at least in modern times. Well, it is unheard of. And, and um, you know, I also heard the governor say that uh, skeptics will say this was because we received uh, funding from the federal government. Um, I don't consider myself a skeptic. I consider myself a realist. And uh, the reality is we received over $8 billion from the federal government. And um, much of that is uh, to uh, bolster up the state's economies. And it has certainly done that for Illinois' economy. Um, I don't think that is something that we can ignore. Uh, those are dollars that are going into um, our revenue streams and um, helping uh, the, to paint this picture uh, that the governor has painted for us. Also, there was uh, money that's going towards uh, the, the pension fund that is so underfunded in Illinois. And also addition of almost a billion dollars towards what's often called a rainy day fund. I mean, fiscally, those are, those are areas that Republicans certainly wanted to see. Absolutely. And, and um, I am not going to um, suggest that any of this is a bad idea. Um, as a matter of fact, I think um, that many of these ideas uh, coming from the governor and, and his staff are, um, are uh, very laudable. Uh, my concern is um, if, we, if we promise this money, and we promise it for this year, um, will we be able to sustain that budget next year and the year after that, um, and in, in fact, uh, make increases uh, caused by inflation um, and, and be able to pay our bills? So um, it, a, a rainy day fund is a terrific idea. We haven't seen that since Governor Edgar was in office and um, paying down our pension debt, which is upwards of $130 billion. Um, absolutely, those are things we need to be doing. You, you're very interested in uh, higher education because you, mm -hmm. you serve the district that includes Western Illinois University. Yes. Um, and, and you also said that it really is the details of the budget. Um, what do you see right now as far as Western is concerned? I mean, as you well know, the, 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 those two years of freezes uh, back a couple of years ago were devastating to the university system in Illinois. Um, and, and also we've seen declining enrollment on campuses throughout the state, including Western. How do you see Western right now? Do you see it stabilizing and growing or do you still see concerns? Um, actually, I see it um, stabilizing and growing and, and uh, um, I give kudos to uh, President Wong for that. He has been uh, very, very active in, in uh, uh, recruitment and um, it has a, a real focus on retention for our students. And I think that's um, one of the areas that um, oftentimes gets overlooked. The governor said when it comes to the budget, and I was wondering what you thought of when you heard this, he said seats at the grown-up table will be off limits to those who aren't working in the public's best interests. Did that anger you at all? Um, I guess uh, anger is one word. Um, I, was, I was ashamed for him. Uh, I don't think that kind of rhetoric is necessary. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, I would hope that we would all have seats at the table and it would be one table, not a grown up table and a child's table, um, but the table and that we would all be there um, and, and be able to express what is needed in the areas that we represent. And our thanks, of course, to Republican State Representative Noreen Hammond of Macomb. And our discussion continues online and on your mobile device. Just type the search words this week on our website or use our mobile app. And we posted more information and important links for today's topic. Plus, you can listen to our entire interview with Representative Hammond on our podcast. Just click on This Week at WQAD.com. Still ahead on This Week, Ronald Reagan once said, The nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help.
why those words and his life is being celebrated in Whiteside County today. And later, a cool idea. Our finishing touch takes you to the ice and a touching memorial and rallying cry against cancer in the Quad Cities. It's coming up later on News 8 This Week.